What do you think about Good this morning. resignation then? Has it come as a surprise to you? Well, in some ways, no, the man had a pretty impossible job because, of course, his ability to investigate is determined by the prime minister himself. So he's not fully independent, as he's acknowledged. But I'm not sure any of this is going to fundamentally change the dynamics of, of politics. Even before this happened, we had 58 percent of the British saying that they believed the prime minister should resign over party gate. Uh, most more people than not said that the investigation had not been thorough enough and you know they didn't believe that it was going to lead to consequences for the correct people. And of course, we have the Labour leader, Keir Starmer, seen as more honest by a margin of about three to one compared to uh, Boris Johnson. So with all of those things together, uh, it's, it's not really this, this second ethics advisor resigning is not on its own going to really change the dynamic. Most people have made their mind up about party gates and all of the things that may have gone on at Downing Street uh, well before this, to be quite honest. So it's just confirming uh, many people's existing views, in, in, in my opinion. And unless, of course, only, Ben, be but uh, unless, Ben, we find out something else, some deeper reason, some more um, uh, obvious reason as to why he, specific reason as to why he's resigned, and indeed whether others follow suit. Yes. I mean, I think if you started to see more ministerial resignations, if you found out that he there was he had written and said a whole load of very specific things to the prime minister, uh, which had been ignored, uh, then yes, you may see yet more reaction. And certainly inside the Conservative Party, he's already had 41 percent of his MPs vote for him to stand to, to you know, voted in no confidence in him. Uh, this certainly isn't going to help him in that situation at all. And it probably speeds up the arrival of the next uh, no confidence but vote uh, by the 1922, through the 1922 committee, etc. But, you know, the public have made up their mind about Boris Johnson, and they probably couldn't even tell you who the first ethics advisor was. And most of them couldn't tell you who the, what the name of the man who's just resigned was anyway that the public have made up their mind on Boris Johnson. What do you think we're going to see uh, at those two by-elections next week? Well, and that, that is a, that's a very, very good question. I mean, there hasn't been much polling in by-elections, and by-elections are notoriously difficult to poll in, so I'm not going to uh, make firm predictions. Let's, let's wait and see. But if they do lose one seat to the Liberal Democrats uh, down in the south, they lose Labour back to uh, Wakefield, back to Labour in the north, that starts to send a very clear message. And I think his MPs become even more restive. Uh, he's, you know, Boris Johnson is damaged. Uh, but at the moment, if you look at the underlying numbers, he's still not past this point of absolute no return. Mrs. Thatcher was as unpopular as Boris Johnson at a few points in her time in office and did come back and win general elections. His opponent, Keir Starmer, is not yet showing the sorts of numbers that guarantee that he would become prime minister in a general election. More people dislike Keir Starmer than like him. So Boris Johnson isn't particularly popular uh, at all, but it's always compared to what? And at the moment, it's a sort of, we're still in this, uh, I suppose, um, phony war type period in terms of absolutely knowing uh, what might happen at a general election. But the two by-elections will be real people voting uh, and I think will have a huge impact depending on what happens.